Far Over the Misty Mountains by J.R.R. Tolkien Far over the misty mountains cold, to dungeons deep and caverns old, we must away ere break of day to seek the pale enchanted gold. The dwarves of yore made mighty spells, while hammers fell like ringing bells, in places deep where dark things sleep, in hollow halls beneath the fells. For ancient king and elvish lord, there many a gleaming golden hoard they shaped and wrought, and light they caught to hide in gems on hilt of sword. On silver necklaces they strung the flowering stars, on crowns they hung the dragon fire, in twisted wire they meshed the light of moon and sun. Far over the misty mountains cold, to dungeons deep and caverns old, we must away ere break of day to claim our long-forgotten gold. Goblets they carved there for themselves, and harps of gold where no man delves. There lay they long, and many a song was sung unheard by men or elves. The pines were roaring on the height, the winds were moaning in the night, the fire was red, it flaming spread, the trees like torches blazed with light. The bells were ringing in the dale, and men looked up with faces pale. The dragon's ire, more fierce than fire, laid low their towers and houses frail. The mountain smoked beneath the moon, the dwarves they heard the tramp of doom. They fled their hall, to dying fall beneath his feet, beneath the moon. Far over the misty mountains grim, to dungeons deep and caverns dim, we must away ere break of day to win our harps and gold from him. The wind was on the withered heath, but in the forest stirred no leaf. Their shadows lay by night and day, and dark things silent crept beneath. The wind came down from mountains cold, and like a tide it roared and rolled. The branches groaned, the forest moaned, and leaves were laid upon the mould. The wind went on from west to east, all movement in the forest ceased, but shrill and harsh across the marsh its whistling voices were released. The grasses hissed, their tassels bent, the reeds went rattling, on it went, o'er shaking pool, under heaven's cool, where racing clouds were torn and rent. It passed the lonely mountain bare, and swept above the dragon's lair, there black and dark lay boulder stark, and flying smoke was in the air left the world and took its flight over the wide seas of the night the moon set sail upon the gale and stars were fanned to leaping light under the mountain dark and tall the king has come into his hall his foe is dead the worm of dread and ever so his foes shall fall the sword is sharp the spear is long the arrow swift the gate is strong the heart is bold that looks on gold the dwarves no more shall suffer wrong the dwarves of yore made mighty spells while hammers fell like ringing bells in places deep where dark things sleep in hollow halls beneath the fells on silver necklaces they strung the light of stars on crowns they hung the dragon fire from twisted wire the melody of harps they rung the mountain throne once more is freed. O oh, wandering folk, the summons heed. Come haste, come haste across the waste. The king of friend and kin has need. Now call we over mountains cold. Come back unto the caverns old. Here at the gates the king awaits. His hands are rich with gems and gold. The king is come unto his hall. Under the mountain dark and tall, the worm of dread is slain and dead, and ever so our foes shall fall. The three parts of this poem lend a poetic structure to the entire story of The Hobbit. The first version is sung at Bilbo's house by twelve uninvited dwarves and provides the backstory and motive for the quest that becomes There and Back Again. The second part is sung at the house of Beorn as the adventurers rest after being chased by goblins and wargs and rescued by the eagles of Gwaihir. And the third part is recited by the dwarves to cheer up their leader Thorin, now king under the mountain, as a battle against the Wood Elves and Men of Lake Town loons. To understand what makes this poem catchy, it's worth considering rhyme and rhythm. Rhythm in poetry is described by what's called metre. The metre of this poem is simple, iambic tetrameter, making this one of Tolkien's more catchy poems. An iamb is a set of two syllables that go da dum, whereas a trochee is a set of two syllables that go da dum. 
A tetrameter means that there are four such sets in a line, so a line of iambic tetrameter has four iams, eight syllables, and goes like this. The sword is sharp, the spear is long. Contrast a trochaic tetrameter, such as this line from Shakespeare, double, double, toil and trouble. However, the first line of Tolkien's poem doesn't quite fit the metre, you may have noticed. The first half of Far Over the Misty Mountains Cold is not iambic tetrameter. There are nine beats in the line, for a start. Strictly speaking, it feels like the first syllable, far, sits outside of the poem, carrying the reader from prose into poetry, at which point the rest of the line starts. Now, this is not fudging the metre, as we see later in the poem. There many a gleaming golden horde. This also has nine syllables, but the offending A in many a easily disappears into the rest of the rhyme. Not so with far over the misty mountains cold. Why not see if you can spot which other lines in the poem diverge from strict iambic tetrameter? There are quite a few. <laughs> 